Sound design. Okay, so how do we remove echoes from our measurements in Room EQ Wizard? So first of all, what is an echo? And then what are some settings in Room EQ Wizard that we can change to sort of get rid of them? So I'll just remove this for a second. Here is a measurement that I took of a microphone cable. Here are two microphone cables at once. So we've jumped up about 6 dB. And then if I add a 24 millisecond delay to one of those microphone cables, then we have this, right? So we're seeing a, a big comb filter starting at 20 hertz, going up to plus 6 dB, and then down to infinity, up to plus, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You guys know what a comb filter looks like. And then as the peaks get closer and closer, then we basically run out of resolution here and it just turns into a flat line. So if we are looking at this in full resolution, then we might think I need to EQ this and my EQ will look something like this, okay? But that might not be correct. Why? Because some of this is actually going to be perceived by our ear as an echo and some of it will be perceived as part of the sound, part of the tonality. And I can already tell which one it is. I can tell you that everything above 1K is above the threshold that we're going to be calling an echo, and below is still part of the tonality. So said another way, we do not want to EQ this stuff up here, but we do, or we might want to look at this stuff down here as a possibility for EQ. Okay, so what is an echo? So um, I'm not going to read all of this, but I recommend that you open up Bob McCarthy's book. This is on page 95, according to Kindle here. And it says, let's consider 124th octave 24 wavelengths late as the threshold. The threshold for what? Well, we're talking about EQ in this section. And then let's see, down here I wanted to read you this. Optimization options for arrivals under the 124th octave threshold would include the possibility of equalization, whereas those beyond would be restricted to delay or other solutions. So that's why I was saying over here, let's not try to EQ stuff that we are considering an echo. It's considered separate from the, from the original sound. So how did I know this? How do I know this? Well, um, I know that there is a 24 millisecond delay. 24 milliseconds is 24 cycles at 1K, right? Because the period of one kilohertz is one millisecond, 24 times one millisecond is 24 milliseconds. So we should be thinking about things above that as being beyond this threshold of 24 cycles. So it would be nice if in RumiQ Wizard we could have that represented in our graph and not need to be, you know, uh, thinking about this all the time while we're looking at the data here. And there are some ways to do that. So let's look at some different ways that we could be um, removing some of the echoes uh, or this 20, in this case, this 24 millisecond echo from this particular measurement. So first uh, I'll make a copy. So here's a copy and let's just try adding smoothing. So I'll clear selection and here's the one I wanna add smoothing to. So let's put in one 24th octave smoothing. There we go, now you can see at my one kilohertz threshold here, we have started to remove the effects of that echo, that 24 millisecond delay. Um, here's the original for a comparison. So you see it's been reduced, but this isn't the only way we can accomplish that. So let's make another copy of that original. And this time we'll use a window. So we'll add a 24 millisecond window and I'll show you what that looks like. Let's head over here to the impulse 
and I hit return here and you can see I've got my original, I've got the 24 millisecond delay coming in and now I'm going to adjust the window so that it stops here at 24 milliseconds. So I hit apply windows and down here in this magnitude display you see we've immediately removed it and you can see the window here and because it's not a rectangle you know it's attenuating things before the actual end of the window by the time it gets to the end of the window this echo this 24 millisecond delay is going to be long gone this question of removing echoes is connected to a larger discussion of how much room you should let into the measurement how much room should be on our graph that should help us make our decisions about eq um, and I don't think I'm going to get into that in this video, um, but if you also follow this teaching from Bob McCarthy's book, then I'm just showing you one way, some different ways that you could accomplish that. Okay, so we're trying the window method here. Okay, now we see the comparison. So here's the original in purple, and now here is the green. It's windowed out the, complex the reflection immediately, the delay the echo, um, and it looks just like our original single microphone cable. So is that a better representation? I don't know. It makes it seem like there's no energy there at all through the entire frequency range. Um, but that's another option. So there's our original in purple, here's the smoothing, and now here's our windowed option. There is another method that I've been using recently, and um, I've been enjoying it and I'm going to recommend it to you as well. So let's look at what happens with that one. So here I've made another copy and this time instead of applying a window at 24 milliseconds to the entire impulse response, we'll apply a frequency dependent window. And you see that I've set this to 24 and now you know why because we're looking at a threshold of 24 cycles to divide things that we can EQ and things that we can't EQ. So I'm going to apply this window. Watch here. So apply the window. And what's interesting is that this looks in some ways very similar to the 124th octave smoothing that we implied, except for where the energy lies. So you can, you can see that. Let me turn these back on. So there's our microphone cable and two microphone cables. You can see that when we apply the smoothing, we get something that's about in the middle here, right? So the energy seems to be, you know, averaged to the middle here with the smoothing. But with the frequency dependent window, we're actually removing that echo from the signal. And so we end up with, you know, everything above the threshold being the single microphone cable and then things below the threshold getting closer to plus 60 dB. Um, with the two microphone cables. And this is going to give you a different result than for your EQ. So now you might think about applying some kind of EQ that's like this. This would have given you a different solution. And again, of course, this would have given you a different solution as well. Um, so yeah, three different ways of looking at it, three different ways of removing reflections from our signal here in Room EQ Wizard. And so the one that I've been recommending uh, to my students and the one that I've been using recently is the frequency dependent window. And I've even just built it into my preferences. So over here in the analysis section of the preferences, I'll typically just leave this on now because it makes a lot of sense to me and uh, seems to help with just getting immediately quicker, more actionable data that doesn't require um, messing around with the smoothing um, or other window features. So let me know what you think about this. Uh, maybe you found some way that's even better than this to control how much echo is perceived here, viewed on the graph. Um, and yeah, let me know how it goes for you. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.